This video covers esports and game development starting in 1999 to last week. Super cool. Watch. Highly recommended, boys. The entire history of Counter Strike. Thank you, Enlisted, for sponsoring this video. W Enlisted. The future of Counter Strike. Oh, man. I'm gonna get a little bit nostalgic. I may cry. The year? 2011. Oh. Life-changing year in gaming for many, and plenty of companies began taking notice, wanting a piece of that sweet, sweet gamer revenue. Timeless classics were released, such as Skyrim and Portal 2, Battlefield wow. 3, Modern Warfare 3, Gears of War 3, Uncharted 3, Lego Star Wars 3, Super Mario 3D Land. Let me make it a little bit louder. Battlefield 3 I played so much. Call of Duty 4, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2. Oh my days. Saints Row the 3. Oh. Do you remember this one game? Wait. Star Wars, is it Battlefront? Star Wars Battlefront, oh my god. <laughs> if you know, you know. And Cars 2, the video game, which was somehow released three days before Cars 2, the movie. But as you and I were busy playing these games that would alter the trajectory of our lives forever, one community remained virtually unfazed through it all. Counter-Strike. You see, Counter-Strike players are stubborn. They always have been. And way back when, their stubbornness put them into a very unique situation at the time. Two different titles saw this community of hardcore competitive gamers divided into two separate factions. The tried and true original Counter-Strike 1.6 and the new and improved Counter-Strike Source. You could literally tell one of these former players today which one you like, and they'd still give you an incredibly structured rundown on why your preference was wrong. Despite these games being from the same franchise, there were clear distinctions between the two. Aside from 1.6, looking like it could be played on an iPad mini. Depending on who you ask, they'd usually say that Source was buggy and unpolished, a silly game not designed for true competitive play, while 1.6 is outdated and clunky, and that those players need to get with the times. This battle between old and new had raged amongst themselves for nearly seven years after the release of Source, until in 2011 when a third ripple began to unfold that was about to change everything. Counter-Strike 3. Well, sort of. This one doesn't actually count, and we don't acknowledge this one, and this one is not technically Counter-Strike 2 because this one is CS2, and- But to understand how we got here, we need to go back to where it all started. Before there was a shitty sequel- Oh ha! Is it your video? Yo! We got the creator in the chat. Fucking boss. Hey, I'm fucking sitting back relaxing. I already enjoy it. Let's fucking go. Before there was Counter-Strike Condition Zero. We need to go back to the 90s, where a student attending college in Canada went by the name Gooseman. Gooseman began modding Quake in his first year of college when he met a man named Jess Cliff, and together they came up with this idea for a mod on the original Half-Life called Counter-Strike. Cliff would be most remembered for his role as the voice of the announcer and also getting catfished on an 18 plus forum. When Gooseman was in the middle of his senior year, he spent 20 hours a week creating this mod and in 1999 released what would essentially be Counter-Strike Beta 1.0. At this point, Counter-Strike was only hostage rescue which goes to show how good it was for people i put you in the video but only for 0.25 seconds i hope you see it <laughs> what the hell? all right all right i keep an eye out thank you people to actually be playing that game mode <laughs> however when counter-strike beta 4.0 saw the introduction of bomb defusal the developers of half-life noticed how successful the game was becoming and began assisting with the game's development until deciding to buy the rights to counter-strike and hiring both gooseman and cliff in the process and then on november 9th 2000 counter-strike 1.0 was officially released for windows also on this exact day in history some french kid named matthew was born in 2000 quake was still the main event at cpl and counter-strike had a 15 thousand dollar prize pool as a side event a year later in That's 2001 counter-strike had already increased to a hundred fifty thousand dollar prize pool and took over as the main event in cpl keep in mind this was the same year that i was born so after inflation the prize pool would be around two hundred sixty four thousand dollars which is an insane amount of money to be competing for in a game that was released just a year prior jumping forward a few years and several releases later valve in 2003 released steam which was pretty cool i guess steam made it so that developers no longer had to release every update as a huge patch on their website but could instead Instead, push out small and big updates through Steam whenever they wanted. Before Steam, every single patch from 1.0 no, I... to 1.5 had to be manually downloaded, which already took hours thanks to garbage internet speeds back then. But when thousands oh of players God. around the world are trying, dude, I remember having a hundred kilobits download, hundred kilobits. I was watching videos in 480p, bro, and uh, and they still kept buffering sometimes. <laughs> oh my days. Aqua in Germany, Aqua. <laughs> I think they're part of Vodafone now or something. Jesus. My mom was, I think, cheaping out on the internet contract, bro. Fucking hardcore. Holy shit. 
trying to download the same update as you from the same server, speeds are slowed down even worse than before. So along with Steam also came Counter-Strike's final release, 1.6, which coined the term CS 1.6 since everyone is going to be playing on the same version all the time. For Gooseman, the success of the game in getting hired at the company that made the game he mods for was a dream come true, but he would soon realize that it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows at Valve HQ. The reason 1.6 ended up being the final release was because although Gooseman intended on working at Valve to develop Counter-Strike 2, Valve said no. We are not doing that. And I can only imagine it was because Valve already had plans for a sequel of their own. Come March of 2004, Counter-Strike Condition Zero was released for Windows and it was so poorly received that I probably won't even talk about it for more than 30 seconds. Valve at the time thought a single player campaign for Counter-Strike was a good idea and although the graphics were very slightly better, it was essentially just an alternate reality 1.6, so it flopped about as hard as my Lethal Company video did. Unfortunately for the fans of 1.6 though, Condition Zero wasn't the only thing that was going to let them down this year because just a few months later Valve released Counter-Strike Source. Significantly better graphics in all aspects of the game, players even had the ability to import pictures straight from their computer into the game. Bro! Out bro! Many way worse examples I cannot show in this video. I should come- This was a thing. It, 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 you had graffitis and you could- you could upload your own ones. What the hell? Chat, I wish I was playing the game during this time. How bad was it? I would assume like- if, like, if I think what the CS community would do, of course, hella crazy stuff, like really bad things, probably. Um, when it comes to some symbols, maybe Jubilee. some German symbols. Porn, of course, some f dicks, probably. Um, some boobies. Mainly tits. Bro, it's. Bro, I think tits make actually, I think, the most sense as well. Because then you're distracted. Imagine you peek an angle, and then you have some boobies. You attack your, 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 of course, immediately, bro. If you didn't, maybe that day, um, your focus is off for a second. Suck the guy peeks, swing, white swings you. That. Buddha. Exactly how you'd expect it to. Models had ragdoll physics, and even the props had physics. He just he just hid the bomb under the barrel. He just rolled a barrel on top of the bomb. Source like, had bro, there, there there's some mental gymnastics behind that as well. Which which graffiti distracts the enemy the most? I would analyze my enemies. If I see okay, maybe there's some people who like this that. Maybe I download, you know how sometimes on TikTok now, people invade a live stream and then they take their profile picture. I would maybe download some enemies' profile picture, they peek and then, oh, that's me. Bruder, suck. And then they think like, oh, did I get hacked? The exact same ideas as 1.6. However, I wish we still had this. Competitively, the game was just executed poorly. What the Wikipedia won't tell you about reception and competitive divide is that holy shit did nearly everyone hate it. There wasn't just some criticism, there was a much larger part of the community who refused to play it at all. 1.6 had better movement, spray mechanics, sounds, and physics. Not to mention most people who play 1.6 didn't have good enough computers to run Source, especially players in less fortunate countries. As an example of how out of touch Valve was at the time, in 2006 Source tried to introduce a system called dynamic weapon pricing, which was supposed to change the price of weapons and equipment every week based on how frequently they are bought. For examples, SMGs like the MAC-10 would be $140, while weapons like the Deagle would cost up to $5,000. I don't know. I still can't believe that this was a thing, bro. I remember we watched a video already about like that this was the thing, uh, that this was the thing. Bro, the more guns got bought, it's, it's, it's basically like, like a crypto and you could check what the M4 is worth this week i love it chat it's 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 a self-adapting meter if 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 one gun is too cheap like for for at, at the current price people keep buying it oh my god right now m force meter then it turns way too expensive it gets from goes from 3k to 6k next week you have the f people gotta go with an rvp gotta go with an ak deagle all of a sudden 5k brood i love it it's so cool of course it's not really feasible but Man, I love the idea. I love the idea. So f cool. And would be $140, while weapons like the Deagle would cost up to 5000 <laughs> I don't know who came up with this abysmal idea, but I assume it was intended <laughs> to take sick. advantage of Steam's quick and easy update system, showing that weekly updates were possible. A couple of months later, Valve had to abandon this idea after players showed them why it was incredibly stupid. This kind of just <laughs> proved that Valve did not know what the f*** they were doing. So with all that being said... This was because some guns... I remember watching a video on this. I think went down to like, was it zero? And then people just uh, uh, um, spam and shit. Players casually causing inflation, yeah, <laughs> because guns were so cheap. And then there's a bruder. It's so funny. Drill, uh, this kind of just proved that Valve did not know what the f 
they were doing. So with all that being said, and 1.6 basically never getting updated again, let's talk about how successful esports was. These games are competitively driven after all, and I'm going to talk about money because I need to do this so you understand how little Source was cared about by the players. 2005 was the first year that Source saw any tournaments whatsoever, and there was a total of $150,000 of all 12 tournaments held that year, and way more than half of that total value came from one tournament alone. You should guess how much money 1.6 had in tournaments that year. If you said 1.3 million, you would be right. Wow. That year held a few six-figure prize pools, but the biggest one was ESWC 2005 with a $140,000 prize pool. Ah, okay. Somehow 1.6 actually got bigger since the release of Source, and it's not even close. In wow. 1.6, nobody was more successful than the ones from Europe. Of the top 10 most successful organizations, eight of them were European or Eastern European teams. 1.6 curated phenomenal talent from all over, such as Kogu and FNX from Brazil, or Forrest and Get Right from Sweden, Taz and Neo from Poland, and the United States player good for nothing just to name a few there what i love about cs i swear on god bro look at all the history bro the players that that came up and that are still around taz now coach on on on, on a tier one arc on g2 bro it's he is still around i don't know about the other guys but as in neo from poland neo and neo now face coach bro it's it's lovely no the united states the player history that we have man good for nothing, just to name a few. There was plenty of incredible talent from Source as well, and they're mostly French. Take RPK, for example, inarguably the best Source player in history, and they nicknamed this mother f Le Temps. Of the 56 tournaments RPK played from 2007 to 2012, he didn't win nine of them. You didn't hear that incorrectly. He got first place in 47 of the 56 tournaments he played in. The nine tournaments he didn't get first place in, he got second place in eight of them what? and one in third place. Whenever this dude showed up to your tournament, there was an 84% chance you were losing. Several things are depressing. How? Was it the team or was was he always like, or was, was he as well on different teams? Bro. The dunk of 2012, but 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 for a whole year, that is insane. He was a menace. What? Pressing about this though, his success could be attributed to nobody giving a shit about Source and making him look like a god among men. But the worst part of it all is that RPK isn't even in the top 10 players who earn the most money in Source. The highest earning players all took advantage of an event called CGS and CGI, no. who had heavy bias towards English speaking players because it was an event owned by DirecTV. There was a UK slash EU combine for that event, but guess who didn't play? The top three highest Come earning on. players in Source didn't even play more than 26 tournaments. The third highest earning player in Source history only played four tournaments and made more money than literally everybody else jesus jesus one million prize pool uh, sorry one thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars wait this little bro there was no money back then most notably though rpk wasn't even the best player to come <laughs> i from thought so one mil one k but those guys will make themselves known in just a moment so for now let's fast forward <laughs> to 2010 year of the greatest video game of all time skate 3 and the start of a new decade hltv started to implement a rating system for top level players which would in turn show what players had the best performance all year round hltv was the go-to spot for watching matches and getting news about the game and the esports scene you can consider hltv to be the espn of counter-strike except better there is truly nothing like it in all of esports this year, though, we got an in-depth breakdown of the top 20 best players of 1.6, but not for Source players, those guys. Also, please note that there are only two Americans on this list. It's going to be like that for a while. Did anything else happen this year? Well, since Source lost that industry plant DirecTV event to the 2007 housing crisis, prize pools dropped back down to normal, but technically would have peaked in 2010. But 2011, what's funny about this year is that it would have been a great year for competitive Source because they released a massive patch with balance changes and things that probably would have made players consider trying it out. But they stupidly decided to release this update only 11 days after announcing CSGO. For Further proving that Valve had literally no f***ing idea what they're doing. I wish I could tell you about how much this update impacted the game, but I can't, because everyone at the time was probably thinking, there's a new game next year, why should I start playing Source now? So in anticipation for the new edition of Counter-Strike, both of the competitive scenes slowed down a little bit while gearing up for the release. There was still plenty of competition, but tournaments in 1.6 dropped from 111 events to 78 in 2011. Same with Source going from 58 to 42. When 2012 rolls around and CSGO had an early beta, the consensus was pretty awful actually. I talked a little bit about it in my 
first video, but to give you an idea of what people thought at the time, the first line in the HLTV article says, if I said the game resembles CS 1.6 more than CSS as it is right now, I would be lying. And quite frankly, even CSS feels smoother. And that one sentence honestly tells you everything you need to know about CSGO at the time. But as the game steadily improved, last players continued to play 1.6 in Source until the game's official release. The last 1.6 major event was in March, because tournament organizers planned to make a switch to CSGO, seeing that we are now in 2012 and they are still hosting tournaments for a game that looks like it was made in 1999, because it was. There are still plenty <laughs> of smaller events being held until late 2012 for both titles, but then in 2013, poof. None. All gone. CSGO released in August of 2012, and the last land in 1.6- was CSGO, where pros uh, were so mad, no? And then it didn't want to adapt at all and said like, yo, we need to remove Molotovs and stuff. Do you remember that? Was it Nico? Bro, like, we need to remove Molotovs. When they add something new, like, directly, nine, let's keep it the same way, lul. CS2, the smokes, people at the beginning mad as well. Bro, change a little bit. Was it Glaive? Lul history, the ESEA Season 13 Finals was also holding a CSGO event, in which a few losers of just made this absolutely cursed roster that just dominated the 1.6 side of the land. CSGO's influence over the community took over almost immediately. But before I get into any more detail, I need to talk to you about today's sponsor. Enlisted is a squad-based FPS that skillfully combines PvP with PvE combat and is currently available for free on both PC and consoles. With over 400 unique weapons, tanks, and aircraft from infamous Skins. tanks like the German King Tiger to more obscure guns like the American Johnson LMG, Enlisted <laughs> offers a truly massive arsenal to unlock and play around with. Be the command of your own Any squad of AI-controlled soldiers and lead them into some of the most intense battles of World War II and massive teamfights against squads of other players. Enlisted is heavily optimized and runs on the same Degore engine that War Thunder uses. This engine provides a lag-free experience with impressive visuals and high frame rates even on low-end machines. Fight on the side of the US, Germany, the Soviet Union, or Japan and unlock hundreds of weapons, tanks, and aircraft to customize your squads with. Vehicles and enlisted don't have one large health bar but actually suffer damage to their individual parts and crew instead. Well-aimed shots can cripple vehicles, take out their pilot or crew, or even detonate their own ammo for a huge Is this game good? Leverage the distinctive roles and abilities of your soldiers in battle, device strategies with your fellow squad leaders, and lead your squad to victory. And especially for for those of you who have already played the game, skip and nah, nah, nah. Sometimes I skip ads if it's like, if 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 um if uh yeah, if I have a contradicting sponsor or like uh, I own something contradicting, I do feel bad when I skip ads in general, or if I skip gambling sponsors. But something like this, nine, nah, why not? Zach, it's a good video. We 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 watch the video, thirty-seven minutes, might as well, you know. It's it's uh, Zach. Mm -mm. Enlisted has recently received a huge meta game update, do. introducing Add research trees button. for weapons and vehicles, a matchmaker based on equipment, and various other improvements to gameplay, all developed in collaboration with the Enlisted community. You can play Enlisted for free now on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation by using my link in the description or the pinned comment down below. New players on PC will also receive a special bonus pack that includes multiple items, 4,000 silver, and experience a premium account for three days. The offer is only available for a limited time, so make sure not to miss it. It's good. CSGO is the best litmus test to see which game forged the better players, and it was actually cool as hell to see how fundamentally different the playstyles were uh, between top players downloaded. from these games. The ultimate crossover episode where the players among two different titles finally come together and join forces to create the best teams imaginable. It didn't even take more than a couple of days before the first super team was put together. Ninjas in Pajamas, fittingly the name of the team to win the first ever CS Major, consisted of three of the best 1.6 players and two Source players. This team within the first year of CSGO's release would put together an 87 in zero win Bro. streak, winning 10 events in a row without dropping a single map. NIP would become a- Which is still the longest win streak in the history of Counter-Strike, and it's not even close. Second Coming highest is what? Is it like 40 or something? Not even close. 87. Legendary icon that put everyone's attention on CSGO. Bro. If you didn't swap games yet, you certainly swapped games now. One unfortunate team that had to play NIP a lot in this era was RPK's French squad, Very Games. A team consisting of five of the best source players who would have the displeasure <laughs> Young Kenny. <laughs> Lul of losing five times in the finals against them. But now is as good as time as ever to mention the differences between a Source player and a 1.6 player. 1.6 players tended to be more tactical and slow paced, while Source players tended to be flashy and mechanically gifted. A good example of a 1.6 player at the time would be Get Right, an amazing player in his own ways, but uses positioning and superior game sense to catch enemies off guard or gain a slight advantage over them. An example of a Source player would be Scream, an incredibly quick and precise aimer that oh, just kind of shits on you whenever they feel like it. Definitely a playstyle that's hard to maintain consistency with, but 
whenever they're playing well, they are unstoppable. Valve continue to update the game more frequently than ever, revamping maps and fixing bugs even though the Counter-Strike players will never be happy with anything they do ever. They also added weapon skins in the arms deal update, oh! which I'm sure- I hope it's- I hope it's a big part of the video. Because, nine, this- this is- this is crucial. Skins. Let's talk about it. There won't have a global economic effect that will change the course of history as we know it. Ah! Oh! I caught it! I caught it! 0.25 seconds, I caught it. <laughs> bro, it's still so crazy to me, chat. This is when they release skins. And look what, look what skins we have, bro. This was their first... Uh, this was unreleased. Arms, uh, right here, the Arms and Deals collection, top right. AKK Sardent. Boys, it's still so crazy to me. I will, I will say this quickly. Because a lot of you, you, you all already heard this many, many times. But the fact that they released the skins economy with floats, pattern, um, and the different skins day one and didn't have to change anything. You have to remember, they released it and they changed nothing about it in the past 11 years. And it's the most perfect setup ever. The fact that they got it right from the beginning, boys, and we have the AK Scarpet, and also the rarity that it comes in. We have a couple of months ago, in 2024, 11 years after they released skins with this collection, a Stat Shrek Faction with AKK 761 finally got unboxed. 11 years later. The perfect rarity of skins with different patterns. The Less perfect... The perfect uniqueness of skins, floats, float values, it has all been there from the beginning. How crazy is that? Also, Dark Water, it's, it's, Dark Water is the same pattern tablet as Slaughter. It is one to one. They copy pasted this onto the Slaughter Knives. We have knives in this, we have case hunt knives. The Karambit Blue Jam, the 1.5 million dollar Karambit exists one time in Faction It's still a one of one since 11 years. Bruder, Slaughter Knives. Crimson Web Knives has all, have all been there since day one of them releasing skins. How? How? And nobody else could ever copy a, 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 an economy like this, even though... And, and, and CS did it right from day one. How crazy is that, guys? It's... it's I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The person who cooked up the skins economy is, is ridiculous. I think they hired some people. It's, it's um, uh, rumored, and I think we know this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That they hired people who worked in the economy, in the economy sector um, for Greece, for a whole country. Those guys cooked up the skins economy, bro. It's a little bit weird, bro, uh, <laughs> the guy from Greece, but <laughs> Greece, I don't think, doing the best economically right now. But hey, he cooked up something crazy for CS. Zach. I'm sure won't have a global crazy. economic effect that will change the course of history as we know it. Since day one, we had case on it. I don't get it. No changes, no update. Oh, guys, we're adding patterns now. No, since the beginning, nothing changed. Bruder, zack. Oh, my days. Hello, and they built upon it with stickers. Oh, my God. Oh, Bruder. It's, it makes no sense to me. And Statric, they released Statric as well day one. Statric in nine, chat. It makes no sense. You're... I wonder whether they got... A little bit lucky or whether it was so thought through the fact that now some skins still don't exist the rarity it's it's all perfect it's all perfect like who the f the math about about all of this knowing that oh yeah this is the perfect rarity this is not like oh Bruder, it's, it's wow 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 Operation Bravo came out not long after which added more replayability in the form of I'm after end stream bro this is too ridiculous I have to think about it more Community made map. The video. And a coin that would upgrade the wow. more you play. Dreamhack Winter 2013 was just a few months later. The first ever CSGO major. I want to write a book right now, not going to lie. With a prize <laughs> pool of $250,000. Oh, You'd think it would be a wash for the 87 0 team, but it wasn't. It was a completely separate Swedish powerhouse of a team that took them over in the finals. Flusha and 17 year old Menace JW took the community by storm after stealing the first ever CSGO wow. major from the hands of NIP, who, let's be honest, really shouldn't have fumbled. Uh, nine, nine. Did we have trade-ups from the beginning as well? I think we did. The, uh, oh, nine, how? And then as well, like, session. that we can't do uh, 10 reds for gold. Imagine how, how screwed that would have been. It, all perfect. And uh, since day one, dude, I hope the guy who came up with this is a f 
is 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 happy right now in life because he fucking deserves to be. What a smart fella. What a smart fella. What a perfect fella. Bruder. He secured the CS economy for 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 the for its whole life for all of us to enjoy still in 2024. Holy smokes. I wouldn't be sitting here right now without that guy. Because I really, really got hooked. And my whole childhood was was skins, nerding out on skins, researching patterns, everything. Bruder, thank you. Whoever did this, thank you. Hold that in the same year as their impossible win streak to round out the year gift boxes. Whenever used would give a random user inside the server wow. a random skin. Or whenever you're watching a stream, you have the chance to be given a drop. Oh. Your name would pop up in game whenever you get one. And this obviously turned out exactly how you'd imagine it to. The names <laughs> I usually kept popping up on screen were skin gambling websites. So they had oh. removed the HUD feature. The game was getting consistent updates. The best players of that year were a wonderful mix of 1.6 and source players. The world is healing. And then they had to ruin it all at the start of 2014 when they added the CZ. For $400, you can get a gun that the size of a 5.7 with the firepower of an AK, and it terrorized the game for almost a full oh! year until it got massively nerfed in December and was almost never seen again. There was plenty of great updates this year though, like stickers, Operation Phoenix, oh! Breakout, and Vanguard, cash got added, train got reworked, the best team in North America, I buy power through a game against netcode guides for skins and got permanently banned from participating in Valve sponsored events, ruining the careers of four American players for a few measly pixels on your computer screen. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile in Europe, NIP got second place at yet another major, losing to Polish powerhouse Virtus Pro, but then redeemed themselves by finally winning the one after that. Meanwhile, in specifically France, LDLC wins DreamHack Winter 2014, making them the first group of only source players to win a major, proving that anything is wow. possible. Also, NIP got second place at that one too. Bit of lore at the time, French player Kelly replaced Scream on Titan only to then get VAC banned for cheating immediately after. This is what Scream had to say about the situation. Kelly VAC banned? No. What? Seriously? No. <laughs> Seriously? No. Seriously? No. I, I, don't, I don't trust that. Seriously, Kelly, Kelly VAC banned? I, I, I will tell with my eyes. He has such a way with words. The later half of 2014 also saw Cloud9 sign a roster with North American. It's sad that we lost stream to Valorant, bro. Low key, man. Jeez, I, I was I was watching a clip where oh, uh, where he was trying out CS2 when it got um, released and everything, and he he hopped in game into CS2, into deathmatch for like 10 minutes, and then he said, "Can't play it no more. I don't want to get used to it," um, uh, um, and went back to Valorant. Oh, bruder. Because he wants to, like, keep the same game, like, uh, handling everything, you know, like, he went straight out. <clears throat> Starchild Shroud, 1.6 Legend Nothing, National Treasure Sean Garez, and Hiko, who was the only player to be featured in HLTV's Top 20 who wasn't banned from competition. The only other player I'm referring to here was the 18th best player of 2014, Swag, who at 18 years old was one of the four members of I Buy Power. Swag as well, I saw live recently on Twitch, also Valorant, no? Dude, so many people uh, went over to Valorant. <clears throat> Brax also Valorant. Get banned. NA did not have a lot going for them when Hiko left Cloud9 shortly after joining to go play with former I- You also play CS? Aha! Uh -huh. He's dual wielding it. Boss. Three. By power guys who were all being investigated at the time and weren't banned yet. So he left the team for essentially no reason and Cloud9 Spike. had to pick up Shazam Spike. on short notice. <laughs> also, Get Right would be named the best player in the world yet again for two years in a row. But before I get though, there was a case called the Huntsman and in that case there was a- Guess what was in this case? Guess what people unboxed, then sold for five dollars same day, and which is now worth tens of thousands. Red Rarity M4 called the Howl, and people had a few weeks of unboxing and spending money Hold before up. Valve got hit with a copyright infringement because the guy who claimed to make the Howl actually stole the artwork huh. for it. So Valve removed all the skins he worked on from the case, and you could still trade up to some of those items, such as the Orion, if you were lucky. However, the Howl was the exception. Valve had to recreate the Howl themselves, and you could only have one if you unbox- Bro, it looks so good. Look at the new M4 Howl. Old M4 Howl, bro, nah. I'm, ha I'm happy that the guy- Still the art, man. We have a very, very god tier skin nowadays. And a nice story, everything. Some nice lore. The only contraband skin. Holy. Mm -mm. Boxed it prior. Thank you for stealing some art. Sorry. Here to its removal from the case. Can I say that? Making it the first and only contraband item in the game. In 2015, though, more cases, another operation, and being a fan of North American Counter Strike was a roller coaster as usual. Valve confirmed the I Buy Power throwing scandal after seeing the trade receipts showing all the players getting knives, except for Skadoodle. Streams of FPL and Rank S took off, which were sort of a 10 man lobby for just professional. 
I've never seen these logs. Guys, is it okay if I pause a little bit? Like, I, this is new to me. By the way, all that drama with IBP, they really did throw the match. And I bet for them on alternate accounts, so hopefully these sources this guy has doesn't lead back to me. F my life. <laughs> From an iPhone, like, <laughs> look at this app. What? They intentionally lost a match this past week. Oh, but what did you do for something to lead back to you? Well, somehow Shazam knew about it. No clue how. But an esports reporter got the screenshots of him saying the match is fixed, etc. And posted them. I told this guy named Kud because he had the accounts for them to use. So, on, so the only way people would know about me is if Kud told other people, which I don't think he did. They just made it so obvious in the match. <laughs> bro, this one cash clip, bro, as well. All the players getting knives, except for Skadoodle. Streams of FPL and Rank S took off, which were sort of a 10-man lobby for just professional players. And this era is looked back on fondly for the amount of players we had streaming these games for fun, oh. such as Olaf and Pasha and Scream and more famously Shroud just existing. Shroud has always streamed more than the average player, but on top of his incredibly oh. tame personality, he was a massive troll who had the skill to back it up, though he got a lot of shit for not showing it on land with Cloud9. Speaking of whom, Cloud9 picked up Skadoodle and instantly improved as a team, as well as Freakazoid, who got the whole team wearing tank tops. But then Sean Garris had to make the hard decision to leave the team after losing to a random Kingwin squad that they should have beaten, but didn't, because they are too silly. Well, it was fun while it lasted. We saw the return and rise of Fnatic after they won two majors back to back, but there was a very significant update this year. Dude, I love the this guy's editing, bro. It's also not overdone to, to a point where it's cringe. Like, I love it, bro. Double your video man massive nerf kenny s and jw were so quick with their flicks and peaks that they had to slow the op movement down enough to practically nerf them as players thankfully for kenny s though he was still able to win a major after this change but jw didn't get so lucky oh sean garris noob garris by the way nip got second place in another major this year showing how good they are at barely winning stuff but on the bright side they picked up finnish sniper alu who gave us this gem of a quote are there thread balls only for the commercials or can you actually drink them for the first time ever, Get Right wasn't the number one player in CSGO, as Olaf Meister jumped to the rankings with his ability to rifle and op at the same time. Skadoodle kept the tradition of having only one NA player in the top 20 alive by getting 20th himself. Damn. Oh, and the R8 was also added this year. Probably the oh, biggest no. mistake in CS history, this pistol was a replacement to the Deagle and would one-shot <laughs> enemies to the body with a slight trigger delay. I have no idea why they added this to the game and it still doesn't make any sense because the gun was nerfed and never changed like they refused to make it viable. Shadow Dagger knives were also added and people okay. like to call them butt plugs. 2016 in my opinion was one of my favorite years of CSGO. Operation Wildfire, Nuke and Inferno reworks, Gamma cases which included a bunch of new textures for knives like Lore and Gamma Dopplers, gloves and graffiti which is significantly less cool than the original That was in 2016? Spray. Dude I swear this XQC clip it's like it was yesterday. Now this XQC clip it's not from 2016 right? Lore and gamma dopplers, gloves and graffiti. I got to twist it much later, I think. Which is significantly. Actually, it was okay. Yeah, I was. I was starting to lose it. So do you know sometimes this clip? Did you know that Battlefield 3 was 20 years ago? <laughs> but it's just like a meme. Oh, man. Less cooler than the original sprays we had in Source, but at least it's something. This year is massive for esports as well, as the majors went from being $250,000 to $1 million for each one, and the battles hey, for these yo. titles were incredible. This year we saw Team Liquid, who has always been sort of a number two NA team behind Cloud9, finally rise to the occasion with the help of Ukrainian superstar Simple. Simple at this time was around 18 years old when joining Liquid, and was given the chance after Hiko stood in for the Ukrainian team Flipside, somehow becoming close friends with each other. Simple was incredibly toxic, loud idiot. and amazing at Counter-Strike, which earned him an interesting reputation in NA where he now had to live to play with Liquid. His former teammate and best 1.6 player of 2011, Markolov, said, quote, I feel really awesome that he left because of how awful he was to play with. Simple would often get into fights on stream while playing rank S, most famously. Dude, Simple? Simple looked up to Markolov, no? He was like analyzing his demos and stuff, trying to learn from him, uh, like, uh, from, from Markolov. And then he called him. Richard Lewis mentioned one okay, uh, like uh, mentioned that, that that he called him just like stupid sometimes, uh, even though he's he was playing with the person we kind of like learn from, you know. He just says it how it is, bro. If, if, Bruder, he the absolute goat feels the game on another level. Just like me. Getting into an up, argument please. with Cloud9 Freakazoid, who made fun of Simple telling him to get a tan, and then had to go to anger management for bullying a Ukrainian kid who could barely speak English. Why are you bullying me? <laughs>
Beach, why are you bullying me? Everyone asking. MLG Columbus 2016 was one of the greatest tournaments of all time. Sasha. NIP was constantly scrambling to find a fifth that meshed well with them and were forced to play with their coach, Threat, after Pith had visa issues and couldn't travel. If they wanted to defend their major legend status, it meant having to make it to the playoffs with a guy who hasn't played professionally in over four years. But somehow they pulled it off, managing to beat Maus in a best of three before inevitably falling in the playoffs. But this tournament was where Simple let everybody know that he's going to be something great, single-handedly dragging Liquid to the semifinals before North America had to go and let us down yet again. Here he comes once again. The Bro. first base is a trend. He's going to hit the ground there. It's cold. Oh! oh what? It's jumping double from cold. What is it going? After this round, Liquid blew the lead and did the same thing in the next map to lose the series. It was still an amazing run for Liquid, as NA has never been this far in a CSGO major before, but I'll be honest, it still makes my stomach churn re-watching the jumping double from Cold. Luminosity went on to win the major after absolutely shitting on Na'Vi in the last map, and it was actually heartwarming to see a Brazilian team with so much passion and love for the game win the biggest tournament of all time. FNX and Fallen were already 1.6 legends, but to come up- Guys, we should one time- Would it be a good stream? Just rewatch one of those OG tournaments. Suck. With the analyst desk, everything. Suck. For the nostalgia, bro. Just, just one day. Suck. The grand final day. It could be cool. It could be very, very cool. Not gonna lie. What big here was worth so much more. Literally, it's a million dollars. But this play from Cold Zero was so iconic Remind that Valve me. immortalized the moment inside of the game, creating graffiti in the spot that it happened in. ESL 1 Cologne 2016 would be Simple's last event with Liquid, as although he just joined, he realized that he wanted to be back with his family back home. I think it's pretty uncommon that an 18-year-old moves across the planet, leaving everything behind, and is just happy about it. He decided that this event was his time to shine, though. Another North American miracle run was coming, and a kid from Ukraine was leading the charge. Game after game, Simple showed the world that the next generation was coming, and then he did this. James Oh Which was just really up to do to a fanatic that was already past their prime. By the time Liquid made it to the finals and got just a whiff of winning a major, it was already over because they were playing the same team that won the last major and it wasn't even close. Simple was burnt out after carrying the entire Prius! Prius is still mad to this day that it didn't catch that, by the way. Tournament and put up a stinker at the end. He then went back to Ukraine, where he got offered a spot in one of the most ancient Counter-Strike organizations, Navi. They noticed how well he could perform under pressure and his ability to carry nearly anyone on his own, which he will unfortunately be doing a lot, even though he replaced Zeus, one of the oldest active players at the time, with a career rating of 0.92. But Simple's Oof. short stint with Liquid is remembered by practically everyone. The Brazilians were just in too good of a form to be slowed down at the time. SK and Coldzera made history and NA fumbled yet again. Funnily enough, though, Cloud9 actually won their first big tournament this year, and it was in Sao Paulo, Brazil, beating SK in the finals. If only Sean Garras was there with them. Speaking of which, let's see what Sean is up to. Let's see fast mid. We'll take out their mid guy, and we'll just go into a mid B split quick, okay? You're just boosting yeah. over, and I'll kill this guy. Plan on going- No, just do fast mid, Ronnie. Holy f I don't have a smoke. Did fucking buy one, dude. What? I called the strap before fucking freeze time. 2017 Counter-Strike saw a transition into a new era. And if you thought 2016 saw a bunch of new names take center stage, wait until you see it now. For updates, we had Operation Hydra, a Dust 2 rework, and a lot of skins, but that's honestly it. Canals, I guess? Cases? HLTV updated their rating system to make more sense, if that's worth anything. Anyway, SK only got top three in a major this year, but they still went on an absolute tear, winning eight tournaments and reigning as the best in the world. 2017 was a year of upsets, and I'm not just talking about being upset about nothing in Shroud being oh. replaced on Cloud9. I thought that was part of the video. That was TTS. Wow. Lul. Mm -mm. The most beloved team in history with only one trophy in like three years to show for it. The year started with E-League Atlanta, where Astralis started to take off with the help of 18-year-old Kiarbi, meeting Virtus Pro in the finals, who still had their core of players from 1.6. VP put up a good fight for a bunch of old heads, but the kids are starting to take over, it seems. This looked like it was going to be an insane year with how SK was performing and FaZe building a super team after acquiring Nico and then winning a tournament two months later. Despite winning the major, Astralis and this guy still doesn't have a major. No CSGO major. How? How, bro? was eliminated by FaZe in three tournaments this year. But this was also a big year for the- First CS2 major coming up.
in six days. 18 months. Infamous I buy power guys because ESL decided that two years was long long enough and gave them an unban. This didn't mean that they could play in majors, but it was sort of a last hurrah for the guys. Cloud9 even allowing swag to sub in for the greatest event of all time, CS Summit. A chill tournament held in just a big ass house. Actually, I remember one time we were playing against Virus Pro, Nuke, and it was 15 5 to VP. We were playing as T, VP, ICT, and Fall and Fallen said, Guys, if you think we are good, let's prove it now. 15 5. Did we come back? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> the second major was an underdog story between Gambit and Immortals, a completely different Brazilian team proving that this region is just unbelievably talented at Counter-Strike for whatever reason. Gambit stole this major all in thanks to Zeus, who was probably fueled by the fact that Simple replaced him. I just say, all of Meister, I love you! And second, God help me and I won major! One thing I don't understand, bro. Was tournament production better seven years ago? This is 2017. This this looks ridiculous. The gaming booths, the the way the the, the, the camera is set, the crowd. I, I feel the hype. This is from 2017. Probably fueled by the fact that Simple replaced him. I just say, all of my stuff. I love you, bro. And second, God help me, and I won measure. It's insane. Woo! Simple, by the way, had a relatively bad year as Navi tried to find out. I feel like some tournaments feel feel not as hype as as some 2017 ones. How? The game was bigger, much bigger than back then. How? It's insane, bro. How the hell they could keep two oppers like Guardian and Simple at the same time? After the Major realizing they couldn't, then replacing Guardian with the same Zeus who left the team and immediately won a Major like your ex-girlfriend cheating on you and then coming back to try and get married. This obviously didn't work and Simple suffered for it. And the old guard of Counter-Strike has officially taken their final stand, with NIP having their last big tournament win in Oakland with a close 3-2 victory over FaZe. We never see these legends win anything huge ever again. So let's go to the first month of 2018 where, holy shit, Cloud9 just won a Major. Oh, oh, it's happened! They made it work! Cloud9! Tarek Major! E -League Major Champions! I thought this team was dead in the water, but I guess Shroud and nothing really were the problem. After an absolutely insane underdog run at E League Boston, playing in front of a home crowd, Tarek and Rush were the best two things that could have ever happened to this team. Winning what could only be described as an impossible comeback against what was considered to be the scariest team in the history of Counter Strike. <laughs> C9 were down 0 2 in the group stage then won three series in a row, played G2 in their prime, SK, who had three guys in the top six players of last year, and then FaZe. Wow. No team has ever had more firepower than FaZe, with Nico, Guardian, and Olaf Meister, three players who were considered to be the top three in the world at some point. Yet somehow, out of pure adrenaline and hamburgers, NACS won their first ever and only major championship. Also this year, Bully Hunters! A website where you could call good players to join your game and then shit on the guys being mean to you. I think they should bring this back. What? Oh god, and Danger Zone. Yeah, CSGO Battle Royale was a thing at some point. This was a big deal when it came out, but it got neglected and only a few people cared after a while, even though it was pretty cool to see what people could do with it. I still don't understand. PUBG was the biggest hype ever. Everyone cared about Battle Royales, right? Fortnite, we had Realm Royale. We had all these Battle Royales coming out out of nowhere because it was this shit, Warzone. CS had their own spin on it. They saw it was popular. They made their own thing. Already has a big fan base. Just needs to get them over a little bit. How did... I swear, Danger Zone, it was so much fun. So much fun. Every time... I said this before. Every time I get a... F I, I, I got a friend who never tried Danger Zone before. With, I got them to play it with me. They said, let's play one more. Nine. We need to keep going until we win. One more. One more. And they got addicted to it, bro. Every time. It's, it, I swear, it's just people... Never tried it, but uh, uh, bro, I, I don't know. Every time I got people into it, they got addicted to it. Every time. How was this not more popular? Got neglected and only a few people cared after. I still hope that in CS2, they do the right thing. We need proximity voice chat. We already have everyone on a VC. Everyone has their keybind for voice chat. It is the most um, uh, given thing already in, in CS, right? Imagine proximity voice chat, what it does to you when someone comes with a bump mine, starts screaming. Oh, bruder, the potential, the potential. 
<clears throat> maybe some more players with source tools probably possible bigger maps but then again the cheetah problem imagine one cheetah in the danger zone lobby gg for a while even though it was pretty cool to see what people could do with it after cloud9's miracle run they fell apart quite literally only playing good in just that major out of the entire year skadoodle retired and then they lost stewie and Tarek, who went to mibr to play with the brazilian sk lineup and then cloud9 picked up flush up from fanatic and kiyoshima who was in that old ldlc lineup and the envious lineup that both won majors yeah this shit is cursed speaking of european cs astralis won the second major in 2018 and simple went on a redemption arc coming in at second in the major and winning a few massive tournaments that year, absolutely dominating the competition by himself and not even making it close. Simple averaged a 1.33 rating that year, finally claiming his spot as the best player in the world. Virtus Pro also finally broke up that core of players that have been playing together since 2011 because the results have just been pretty bad for a while. A very sad moment for CS fans as they were the oldest team still around, a bunch of OGs sticking it out together, finally being torn apart by what was rumored to be a Mercedes given to Taz. Forrest and Getrider are still kicking it in it, by the way, it's just that Forrest is actually taking the spot. Spotlight most of the time. The game saw almost no real meaningful updates. There was an MP5. Wait, what? Like a, a, another orc said he gets a Mercedes if he joins them or what? And then it, no shot. No? What do you mean Mercedes incident? I don't know. It, VP gifted him a Mercedes. No, VP gave only ta LOL! Only he got a Mercedes! <laughs> no! And then the others got jealous. Oh, brother which is still never used because it was always terrible and some more cases because skins keep the game alive updates slowed down a lot at this point 2019 i'm going to start speeding these up a bit cash was removed from the active pool and was replaced by vertigo a decision that nearly oh. everybody hated at the time per usual they did a rework on cash a little later w. this year but everyone hated the way it looked because of course they did and cash was then never played professionally ever again operation shattered web was added which had a campaign mode that was pretty cool hey by the way totally random do you remember that kid named matthew earlier that was born on the same exact day that the original Counter-Strike was released? Yeah, he just dethroned Simple as best player in the world. While Astralis were taking over the entire competitive scene, three-peating back-to-back-to-back majors for the first time since 1.6, Zaiwu out of nowhere was dominating the tier 2 Counter-Strike scene like some sort of demigod. He was then given a chance to shine with vitality, teaming up with old French source legends like RPK, Apex, and NBK. Immediately, Zaiwu made it known that he was different. He was matched only by Simple, and nobody could keep up with with him and he was only 19 years old in his first year competing professionally. It was a really close battle for who was better this year. Dude, and Zonic sat? Zonic sat? The, 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 the GOAT coach? Dunk is the biggest prodigy since Zaibu. This, Zaibu gifted. And he said, Dunk, Bruder, hey, wait, wait, it's, 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 it's a new era, boys and girls. It's a new era. <clears throat> of course, I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. Not overrated, huh? I mean, bro, again, highest rated last tournament as well, bro. He's just getting started. Here, but Zaiwu really starstruck everyone. Simple was a slow rise to the top, and Zaiwu just projected himself. The Major is going to be so interesting, bro, to see how Dunk does. Imagine Spirit wins the Major. Lul up there like the game was just easier for him. The community dubbed him the chosen one since he perfectly shares a birthday with Counter-Strike. Also this year, Team Liquid found their form. NA was finally winning competitions and Liquid was dominating after the addition of Stewie 2K. Liquid won IM Sydney and then from June to July 21st, they won every single tournament they played in, earning them an Intel Grand Slam, which was in a million dollar prize for winning wow. four events within a 10 event window. Three players from Team Liquid were in the top 10 players this year with Elise leading them at number four. But after winning six events in a row, it was time for the major where they immediately exited in the playoffs thanks to astralis ignoring the fact that astralis eliminated liquid from seven tournaments over the last year this bout of inconsistency is only achievable by a north american team and it's honestly what we've come to expect at this point liquid was not the same team again after this point and even though they tried to keep the same players it just didn't work because losing to astralis was just inevitable and demoralizing it's also worth mentioning that astralis's device was a top five player in the world for five years straight and he was gonna make it number six because 2020 just didn't exist. We had this global pandemic that was called the uh, coronavirus or something, and it literally wiped every offline event from happening. This year also had no updates, and people were getting a little sick of it. So when a game called Valorant came out with the expressed purpose of competing against Counter-Strike, everyone thought that Counter-Strike was gonna die. Valorant did actually steal a lot of players from Counter-Strike, though. Many of the longtime pros of CS made the switch, most famously Scream, but a lot of the young- Bro, chat. One thing that I completely forgot about, bro. Even I, I remember watching these fucking Twitch channels trying to get early access, trying to get a drop. 
Dude. <laughs> and then I got the drop and I never played it. <laughs> Dude, I was like, I was young. I saw everybody else like, oh my god, I need the drop. And it was like kind of hype. Like on Twitter, they post, just got the drop. Dude, I got the drop. I didn't even play. The fuck? Younger talent as well. Tens became the best Valorant player in the world. And he was on Cloud9 for a bit with another weird roster that they tried to call the Colossus. I don't even know what to say about this, but needless to say, NA was in this shader again. Nip has parted ways with everyone from the original lineup and Dignitas came in and swooped up the squad for a last dance that did not last more than 10 months, but it was a cool idea. Unfortunately for this year, online tournaments are a lot less interesting because the crowd isn't there to make an impact and the game is less consistent because of network latency and lag. So no majors were played at all. This year was a blur. You'd wow. think Counter-Strike would try to go to war with Valorant, but they literally didn't care at all and just did what they always did, which was not update the game. There's this video <laughs> made in 2016 called How Valve Treats CSGO, and it goes over a lot of issues that were around back then, and they all applied even now. Oh. There were stretches of time where the game didn't see an update for upwards to 171 days, but still, Counter-Strike fans persisted because if there's one thing that we know about them, it's that they're stubborn. 2021 didn't change that fact. In fact, it got worse. The biggest thing they added was unranked matchmaking, so you can play 5v5 without playing competitive. Can you believe that? That it's been nine years since the game's release and there was no way to play the only game mode that that's mattered crazy. without queuing competitive well you have to believe it because that's what happened they added a battlefield 2042 sticker collab a game i completely forgot existed until i was writing this script and saw that update operation riptide also came out later in the year but i can't remember anything about it aside from insertion 2 oh on the bright God. side insertion 2 l l l old insertion insertion one. Oh my god bro i love that map i love that map so esports popping on that map. Oh wow! It doesn't feel like Counter Strike. It felt like a different game, bro, because it wasn't so much with like executes and stuff. Oh. I like some hostage maps a lot. Still existed for CS, and Simple was not happy about being the second best player for two years in a row behind a guy who just started playing professionally. This man was cold blooded. He didn't stop trying or slow down at all. He stepped up and got even better, which was terrible for the rest of the scene because it meant that they had to deal with Simple at his best and Zaiwu, who was gonna shit on them anyway. The first offline event since 2019 comes around in IM Cologne, and Simple reminded everyone why they called him the Undertaker and dropped a 1.5 average. Nobody else does it to, to, to the coolness of him, bro. This right here, bro. And an IM cologne and simple reminded everyone why they called him the Undertaker and dropped. Hey, he just whips out the deal, bro. Oh my days, oh my days. Am I glazing? I swear on God, bro. Like no one does that like him, bro. Cheeky K with the yes. RVP, Deagle, tuck into the headshot, bro. I have all my days. A 1.5 average so rating crazy. on their heads. Simple beat Zaiwu in the head-to-head, -head, but to be frank, the rest of Navi were just better than the rest of Vitality. The second offline event is the PGL Major, an accolade Simple has oh. yet to accomplish. He still- Stockholm PGL, Thorin and Richard Lewis on the analyst desk. I actually miss that analyst desk a lot. I always mute the analyst desk. That analyst desk, I did not mute. Even if you don't agree with their takes, their hot takes, if you can't handle them, Richard Lewis and Thorin, it was entertaining as never muted them once. Say L, I'm blocked on Twitter by Richard. Richard hates me. Thorin had me blocked for the most of the time. They don't like me. I can still respect a nice analyst desk and it was a show. It was a show. They put on a show. Still needs a major win under his belt, and he needs that ring to be considered the GOAT of Counter-Strike, and only Nico stood in his way. Nico left FaZe for G2 a while back, and he's also never won a major, mainly because of that. Remember, I think it was PGL Stockholm, with a goofy green screen, bro. <laughs> Man, it was so obviously a green screen, it was so, it looked so weird. <laughs> I loved it though. That thing that Cloud9 did in 2018. Nico is widely regarded as the best rifler of all time because most top players today tend to be oppers. But he is so dead accurate that he's been in the top 20 every year since 2016 and was top 5 in 4 different games. Oh, oh god, and he just did the worst thing ever of all time. Jesus Christ, he's never gonna live that down. Bro, bro, I guys, can't even guys, this, this, this YouTuber. How clean was that? year since 2016 and was top five in four different years oh god and he just did the worst thing ever of all this, this guy's insane bro what the f that is perfect that is art that editing jesus boys i will share the link right now and then at the end again leave him some love drop some fucking subs put the bell on bang that is insane what a f video bruder i can't believe it mm -mm. All time, Jesus Christ, he's never gonna live that down.
I can't even blame him though, because Simple is just on another level. He takes home his first major win, first major MVP, and takes back his number one spot. The icing on the cake for the tragic story of Nico is that his former team, FaZe, ended up winning the next major in 2022 without him. Twist, who was a part of the Team Liquid dream run that lasted like two months, ran away to Europe and betrayed his country, but I'm joking because it was a really good idea for him to do that. 2022 oh was God. a year. I somehow got signed to Team Liquid after winning a competition. That was pretty cool, I guess. I'd ask you to dap me up if you weren't made of water or seltzer of some sort. Nobody's actually specified what the liquid is. CSGO turned 10 years old, yippee. Stickers and music kits and cases, I'm sure you know the deal. Device was on NIP and didn't play for a year. Shox oh, yeah. is on Liquid and Cloud9 are a Russian team. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> the major this year was actually won by outsiders. And if you're wondering who, yeah, that's kind of what a lot of people thought. But it's not exactly an underdog story when they literally have Jesus on their team. And their coach encourages him to mask. Flug major, sag ich debate before what games all right team brazil and team sweden were the show match because the major was in rio and it was the full lg sk lineup that won back-to-back -back majors versus a bunch of 30 year old swedish players and kerrigan who is danish but also 30. literally hydrogen bomb versus coughing baby out of pocket for that shit. Uh, way out of pocket what do you gain from me simple as i oh my god i i think i put a bet on this game with nikita no Brazil versus Sweden. We always do bets on the show match. Nikita and I just like um, some some gifted subs between friends. And did he pick Brazil or me? It was the most try hard show match ever, ever. Usually you see like a Zeus, maybe a PP Bison, right? Usually you go for knives. Sometimes you type in chat, "Yo, let's go knife five v five, bro." It was, it was, it was, it was. They have a double up if you set up. Guys, it was it was the most tryhard show match ever. <laughs> Holy smokes. Nikita had a bet on Brazil. Really? Was it, I thought it was me. Bro, one of us was hella mad by how seriously this was. Bro, it, Jesus. Brazil tryhard to the max. There was not a single troll. I think the most troll buy was like, it was this. Double RVP setup on train. Way up. What do you gain from me? <laughs> Simple and Zyru were still the number one and number two because even though they didn't win a ton, they were still the undisputed goats. This video is already long enough for what was supposed to be a quickie, so let's just get straight into 2023 and the final year of CSGO. It was I a long time to get here, but we are here nonetheless. Valve announced CS2 with a random video oh. about smokes being changed, which would explain why they were absent, like my father getting milk for the last two years. And they released another- 11 months ago? That was one year ago? First playing on top of you have to be more mixed up than Team Sweden. Excuse me, underneath it. Odie, Odie, do we're friends in it. I, I, I can really look at what was it. 5% discount. To peak <laughs> off contact, watching high ramp. Now he's exposed. <laughs> off wow. okay, he How is he not killing him? He's actually trolling, dude. Are we trying to knife? Oh, yeah, what's happening? Eagles in that moment is possible. I think they maybe had one AK, but Taco almost completely exposed. Freiburg now. Bro, that was bad. Against, can I say it? Against washed up sweets. I can say it, no? Whoa. That's not me. That's AI. That is not. I was actually mad though, bro. Like, it's 9 to 1. You're about to finish the game, and you have not a single troll weapon in a show match. You're playing for nothing. A PP Bison, give us, give us some pistols. A scout, maybe, maybe auto sniper, auto sniper. Double RVP setup, AKM4. And they execute. Nah, bro. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah. They're not. 4v1. It's, it's, it's still. It's, it's, no knife, anything. I'm not punching when I say it. This is a lockdown. What? Dude, for the you know get right. How can you see it? Oh, oh, it's oh, it's oh, not toxic oh, if it's. Like, why is he tryharding? Right, that's not toxic. Oh, man. Well. <clears throat> Their case with it because of course they did and the major was a doozy that was pretty toxic <laughs> i lost 500 i think oh, well. and i say doozy not just because it's a stupid word but because it was it took place in paris and the champion stage was full of a bunch of underdog teams hungry for their first title an epic note to end csgo oh. but the chosen one wasn't going to let down his home country in the last major of csgo's history so in a story that's as fitting as it is poetic like a script that was meant to be played zaiwu takes home his first ever major wow. championship and the mvp to go along with it it's a really nice way to go out it almost feels like it was meant to be oh. and the best trophy of all counter strike tournaments the the come trophy the Trophy.
boss. They go out. It almost feels like it was meant to be. Simple did <laughs> I remember when Blast did a tweet and they asked like, yo guys, we're trying to figure out um the trophy for the last CSGO major. And they made a post like um they just asked about two different colorways. It was like either it I think it was green drizzle or yellow drizzle. No, it was no, it was reverse. It was purple drizzle. Yellow blast logo, a purple blast logo, a uh, yellow drizzle, <laughs> and everyone was just like, "What the? F Neither, <laughs> bro." <laughs> they just asked, "Which one, <gasps> bro?" Like it was meant to be. Simple didn't play much of CS2 when it released. He was very upset about the way it felt, and many pros felt oh, similarly. No. But he took a much stronger approach. So Zaiwu took back his number one spot in the world. But Counter Strike stays competitive. Vitality won two in a row to end the year, but Nico and G2 won a few trophies as well. <laughs> FaZe won a Grand Slam and then proceeded to win three big tournaments in a row. Twists becoming the only player in CS history to win multiple Grand Slam. 2024, there's this kid named Donk who is currently terrorizing the whole scene right now, and people are accusing him of cheating, even on land. He is like only 17 years old, and you know what? He's starting to look like another Zaiwu out there. Hey guys, post edit K here. Sorry if the audio sounds a little different. I'm recording this after I finished editing everything. I just wanted to give a couple quick notes before signing off. So Simple joined Falcons temporarily, debuting his return to Counter-Strike. He played his first match in three months and it definitely wasn't his greatest performance. The first ever CS2 major PGL Copenhagen is a little over a week away and it'll be the first time that Dupree won't be playing in a major after having won Fuck. five of them, more than anybody else in history. Donk is continuing his generational stretch of individual dominance and Zaiwu is still Zaiwu. Obviously in this video, I missed a lot of interesting things players, events, probably a few updates, and maybe even got a couple of things wrong as well. If you notice something that I didn't, call me out on it in the comments below, or just give your suggestions and I'll make future videos covering everything. He's actually good at the game as well, what the hell? Everything important that I miss. Also, huge thanks to the people over at Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use my link in the description or the pinned comment down below and play it for free oh, on PC, video. PlayStation, or Xbox nice. now. New PC huh. players will still receive a special that bonus pack that nice. includes multiple items in game currency and premium that. account time. Thank you for clicking on my video instead of all the other videos. You should check out my well, I hope previous he does videos, more CS, I do have more Counter-Strike stuff and a variety of other- Nah, guys, show him some love now, bro, now. Yeah, last video on Lethal Company, bro, holy smokes, what a video. Dude, and so, he, he, he knows, like, he knows it all. This was a perfect video. 